Chapter 2 Winds of Change Herman and Leffen sat near the hearth. The low crackling of the fire filled the silence between them, a silence brought on by the statement made by Dolian Stark Landry. Herman sighed. Dolian's claim that the stood on his property gnawed at his mind as he struggled to figure out how to pay the rent. He glanced at the walls adorned with tapestries from his father's travels, the wooden beams overhead, and the extensive library that was his pride and joy. An ache filled his chest, wishing for his father's guidance. Lefwin shifted until her talkative nature broke the silence. Your father built this place with love, she said, sensing Herman's thoughts. The Lord will provide. It'll be okay. You've done an amazing job caring for the inn. Your father would be proud. Thank you. Sometimes I think Dalian has a heart of stone. Lefwen said. Ever since the king was banished, Stark Landrys have assumed they are in charge of this island. Herman added. I barely remember the king. Why was he banished? I don't know. I think he went a little nutty after his wife died. So, instead of having a nutty king... We have the snooty, power-hungry Stark Landrys. I heard the Stark Landrys own a whole fleet of sailing skiffs down at Port City. Herman said. I would never go on a boat. I'd get seasick just looking at mud puddles. <laughs> I love sailing. My parents take me sometimes. <laughs> I guess you can't be traveling minstrels without traveling. <laughs> Herman loved spending time with Lefwin. Being around her, he felt like he could open up and be himself but he was petrified of rejection. He might have a chance if he didn't say something stupid. Herman dared a glance at her. Her gentle eyes urged him to find the courage to express his feelings, but fear held his tongue. Before Herman could gather the strength to let the wall of his feelings burst open, the door to the inn burst open instead, revealing Herman's disheveled brother Gifford. A black eye marred his chubby cheek. He looked like a wounded raccoon who bumbled into some mischief. Herman, you've got to come over to Market Valley. I bet the whole island has gathered for the festival. Everyone is there, even all the sailors and fishermen from Port City. Hey, I even heard a rumor that some guy flew, that's right, flew into town last night on some kind of a glider thing. Herman, come on. They got games and crafts, and oh, the food. In all my born days, Kifford, what happened to your eye? Ah, uh, it's nothing, really. I got myself into a bit of a card game. Things got out of hand, as they tend to do, and let's just say I wasn't exactly dealt the winning hand. You should see the other guy, though. His fist felt like it was made of stone. If that don't spill the ink, why Gifford? A card came. Were you gambling again? Gifford, what were you thinking? Herman scolded gently, but his brother held up a hand to silence him. Relax, big brother. I assure you, my intentions were pure. I was trying to win some money to help fix up the inn. Alas, it seems Lady Luck had other plans. Speaking of which, I named this one Lady Luck. He opened a jar he held behind his back. Inside, a hairy spire twitched its legs. I found her in a rolled-up rug belonging to one of those merchants of exotic stuff. Oh, wow! What a great find! Oh, hey, Luffin. I didn't see you there. Isn't it fascinating? I thought it might make a nice addition to our business. Absolutely not. You know how I feel about bugs at the inn. Have you forgotten the termite incident? This could be our ticket to more guests. We can have our own little exhibit. There's enough chaos in this world without inviting it into our home. Fine, fine. I'll take it out, but it really is a marvelous creature. After Gifford deposited the tiny creature in a nested pile of twigs, he glanced at the darkening sky. He was struck by a sudden change in the atmosphere. A thick, ominous storm cloud swept across the island's horizon. The temperature dropped, and a cold gust of wind sent shivers down Gifford's spine. Blimey! He gasped. He called to his older brother. That storm's coming in fast. We best batten down the hatches. Herman's eyes narrowed as he scanned the horizon, taking in the ominous clouds bellowing towards them like a ghostly stampede. With a name like Windstorm Island, this region had its fair share of storms, but this one seemed different. He exchanged a worried look with Lefwen. Golly, I've never seen a storm move like that. 
Herman said. This slender frame tends with urgency. Leflin, help me secure the shutters. Gifford, gather anything that could be blown away. As the wind howled like a pack of wolves, Leflin and Herman rushed to close the shutters. They moved with the coordinated grace of dancers in a well-rehearsed performance. Gifford, however, didn't seem to share their sense of urgency and merely stood there, transfixed by the approaching storm. Gifford, get inside! Leflin called. This is no time to dawdle! Right, right! Gifford muttered as he rushed in. The storm, like an advancing black curtain, was nearly upon them when the last shutter clicked into place. Herman let out a shaky breath. The inn felt like a fortress, shielding them from the wrath of the tempest. He felt like something sinister lurked within the storm, creeping ever closer to their safe haven. Herman stepped back and watched as Lefwin's slender fingers locked the door. What? You think the storm's figured out how to work doing ops? You guys are being a bit too jumpy. Gifford said. Herman ignored his brother and clasped his hands together. His eyes closed as he whispered a fervent prayer. Lord, please protect us in our enduring the storm. Guide us through this darkness and keep us safe. When Herman opened his eyes, Lefans met his. Her smile was warm and reassuring. Herman wanted to express his love to her, but not with Gifford nearby. He would mock him mercilessly if he knew he thought of Lefwin more than just that weird girl that occasionally shows up. Maybe we could pass the time in the library. Herman suggested. He directed her to his sanctuary of books. How about some music? Lefwin offered. Her agile fingers danced upon her flute. It coaxed a gentle melody amidst the howling winds, weaving through the tension-filled air. Your music could calm the most ferocious of beasts, Herman said. He admired the way she faced adversity, her bravery, her optimism, and her unwavering faith. Thank you. I'm just trying to keep our spirits up. While the two friends were distracted, Gifford's curiosity began to feed on him. He couldn't shake the feeling that he needed to see what was happening outside, to feel the storm firsthand. Gifford's eyes darted around the room. Even as Lefwin filled the air with tranquil music, he wondered what lay beyond the inn's door. Gifford slipped away and crept towards the door, careful not to draw their attention. He had become quite adept at sneaking around thanks to all those times he had played practical jokes on his unsuspecting brother. He reached out his plump hand to unlock the door and turn the knob. The door's hinges protested with a creak. It was as though the very in itself wished to warn him against his actions. But curiosity drove him forward. The moment the door opened, a gust of wind tore through the inn, extinguishing the candles and drowning out Lefwin's music. As Gifford extended his right arm outside of the safety of the inn, the wind and rain lashed at his skin, and something else, something like a dark tendril of fear welcoming him into its tumultuous embrace. His eyes widened in horror as he felt his arm begin to harden and grow heavy. The skin took on a grayish hue as it transformed into unyielding stone. The sensation spread up his arm, creeping toward his shoulder with alarming speed. The once smooth flesh now resembled the jagged surface of a rocky cliff, cold and lifeless. Help! My arm! Herman rushed to his brother's side, his expression a mixture of fear and responsibility. He grabbed Gifford's good arm and yanked him inside away from the storm's nefarious touch. With a grunt, he kicked the door shut. <clears throat> the sound echoed through the room like a judge's gavel sealing their fate. In all my born days, Herman stared at Gifford's petrified limb. What on earth possessed you to open the door? Gifford, cradling his petrified arm, looked away from Herman's gaze. I... I was curious. He mumbled, the weight of his mistake as heavy as his arm. Lefren moved closer to examine Gifford's arm. She traced the stony surface like a sculptor appraising their latest creation. What on earth happened? Gifford glanced down at his stone arm the reality of his situation sinking in. His once active limb, a testament to his carefree spirit, now lay cold and rigid as a statue. 
the playfulness that once defined him seemed to have been carved away by the storm, leaving a grey reminder of the consequence of his actions. Please, Herman. Gifford whispered, tears pooling. Help me fix this. Herman sighed, pulling Gifford into an embrace. We'll find a way, little brother. He murmured. Maybe someone in Market Valley will know what to do. His eyes darted between Gifford and Lefwen in the dimly lit inn. A realization struck him. Oh no. Lefwen, your parents, they were staying in the valley. Guilt nodded his heart. I hope they are okay, Lefwen. I am sorry I kept you here. You could have been with your parents. This is my fault, and Gifford's arm is my fault too. I should have been watching him more closely. Hey! Gifford protested with indignation. I'm not a baby, I called you. I don't need to look after. I made a mistake, all right? I need to go out there. All those people. Herman said. You saw what happened to Gifford's arm. Herman, it's too dangerous. Cautioned Lefwin. The wooden beams of the pilgrim's rest shook, emphasizing her warning. It's safer in here. I'm safer here. Let's wait until the storm has passed, then we can figure out what to do. Wind outside howled its mournful song as the storm continued its rampage. The three friends huddled for warmth and comfort, waiting for the tempest's fury to subside. As night turned into morning, exhaustion overcame them, and they drifted into a fitful slumber, their dreams filled with petrifying storms and stony limbs. Morning light filtered through the cracks in the shutters, rousing Herman from his slumber. He glanced around, wondering if the events of the night had been nothing but a terrible dream. But one look at Gifford's stone unconfirmed the harsh reality. Guys, come on. Herman whispered urgently, shaking Lefwen and Gifford awake. We need to see if anyone else was affected by the storm. They stood before the inn's door like soldiers preparing for battle. Herman pushed the door open. Gifford's stony arm hung at his side like a heavy lifeless pendulum. An eerie silence greeted them. Where's everyone gone? Herman wondered aloud. I told you everybody went to Market Valley for the Harvest Festival. Gifford replied. We need to go there. Lefwen said. We need to find answers. They headed east out of Hope Haven towards the valley, each step heavy with dread. Cobblestone streets glistened with rainwater beneath the morning sun. When they reached Market Valley, they were met with a sight that chilled them to the bone. Neighbors, friends, and strangers alike, all frozen in place, their bodies turned to stone. The horror etched on their faces was a macabre testament to the storm's wrath. It was as if they had stepped into a grim tableau. The once vibrant harvest festival resembled a motionless sculpture garden. Musicians, dancers, and children caught forever amid eerie movement. As they moved further into Market Valley, the weight of the tragedy pressed down upon them. Every statue they passed told a story of lives interrupted, dreams shattered, and families torn apart. In all my born days, Herman uttered, his throat tight. Gifford gulped and glanced down at his own petrified arm. Is this... Is this what would have happened to me if you hadn't closed the door in time? Gifford asked. His voice trembled like a delicate fly caught in a spider's web. Maybe, replied Herman, his voice cracking. We'll find out what happened. We'll help everyone, including Lefwin's parents. She clutched her flute tightly, as if its familiar weight could anchor her amidst the sea of petrified expressions. Torn market tents and stalls lay scattered, their contents strewn haphazardly across the wide field. Broken pottery, tattered rugs, and crushed fruits painted a picture of chaos, their vibrant colors a stark contrast to the lifeless statues that littered the landscape. The trio wove through the motionless crowd, their eyes searching for any sign of Lefwen's parents among the frozen faces. Herman was desperate to help Lefwen and find answers to their many questions. They also scanned the area for any clues that might reveal what caused this tragedy. Hey, there's Mr. Barleycorn. Gifford attempted a weak joke, 
gesturing at the stone figure of the local baker. I always told you his bread was hard as rock. Now do you believe me? Gif, this is hardly the time for jokes. Herman admonished. Look. Lefwin whispered. There's Mrs. Thistleton. I'll never forget the taste of her blackberry pies. Gifford sighed wistfully, remembering happier times. Look over there. Lefwin whispered, pointing toward a small alcove where the stone figure of Dolly and Bellino Stark Landry III was permanently perched in a cowering position. I'm sure that Dalian wanted a statue of himself. Lefwin mused. But not like this. Indeed. Herman murmured, his gaze now fixed on a mother reaching out for her child, both forever suspended in terror. This is a cruel fate for anyone. As they moved deeper into the valley, Lefwin spotted old man MacReady, the town's most devout believer. He had knelt in prayer before his transformation. Sadness struck her, and she admired the man's faith. Let us finish this man's prayer, Herman suggested, and together, he and Lefwin bowed their heads, asking the Lord for guidance and deliverance from this nightmare. While the two friends were praying, Gifford noticed a flicker of movement in the distance. Hey, look over there. There's a guy that hasn't been turned to stone, he whispered squinting to make out the mysterious figure lurking near narrow wayforest. 